One of the things that I'm realizing as everybody is talking here in the group is that this is a diverse group. They may have some things with uh, some areas where they cross over jazz, poetry, whatever, but it's a diverse group of people. And one of the things that I would like to hear you all talk about and um, maybe give some idea to the audience here tonight is how do you explain that? Um, what was it about him that attracted such a diverse group of people to begin with? And then secondly, what was it in him that uh, could see, diff uh, see the possibilities in all kinds of people and connect with them? Would anybody like to talk a little bit about that? I have a theory that uh, sometimes, well, I just have this cosmic theory that people like Merton uh, are magnets and that the people they need come to them. And uh, so if they need stuff on jazz and zen, Dick appears. And if they need something else, that person appears. And uh, um, Jack? I guess that, that uh, one of the things I'm convinced of in terms of Merton's uh, interest today, and I'm going to make it a, a terrifying confession. I was sitting in my desk in Baltimore when I heard of his death, and I wondered, it was in 1968, of course, and I wondered, uh, will anybody remember him in 30 years? And now, of course, the question is, will anybody not remember him in 300 years? But I think that, that his writing is appeal to different classes of people, and one of them is the people who will say, uh, oh, yeah, well, that's really right. He's really, really on the ball there. That's good. And it's not going to move anything except, yeah, agreement. And I think another people, a lot of other people have been nourished by his spiritual direction. Uh, and then I think that there's this part of Merton that did not end. I think Merton is not simply what he said, but he was a direction. And I go back to the old finger pointing that the, the Zen master used to do, and the students were always looking at the finger and never where it was pointing. Uh, and I think that this is one of the things that, that Merton has left us, uh, a vision uh, that we have to complete. Uh, and I think it's very important, especially for young people. Ron and I could go back to the Bellman days when, uh, you stop me, uh, when in, 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 in the 60s, uh, people were reading Merton and wanting to do something about it. Go around the courthouse and kneel uh, in, in favor of open housing. Uh, and, and I think that unless Merton is going to live, then we're going to have to take up his ideas and see that, especially for me at least, and the conjectures of a guilty bystander, he's putting a burden on us not to simply say, gee, isn't all this stuff he said great, but he's also saying, what are you going to do about it? And that's important. Mm -hmm. What are you going to do? Yes, uh, and he was always open and very receptive to someone, uh, but he kept reiterating to me, again, people talk about poets as if they're special, people sit on, on thrones or something, and, and I include poets, all creative people. Uh, it is your response to life, your receptivity, a Eucharistic one, with joy, without fear, and Jack just alluded to the Civil Rights Movement. I was involved with that open housing thing with Dick Gregory and John Hart Griffin, Martin Luther King and Selma and all of that. Uh, these were deep, deep, Commission, committed to issues with him, uh, with racism and, and the peace movement and all of that. There isn't, and I go to the ITMS meetings, they don't talk about this too much. I look in the audience and I very seldom see a minority. Uh, and I wish this could be changed very much. So, and we should emphasize that, keep in mind that he was a leftist. He was very extremely uh, radical. And I, I will say about this, I was coming back to what he was saying, one thing he attracted was I was with the beat movement of Kerouac and Ferland Getty and Carcel. He liked, they, these were crazies. I mean, real, all, you know, loonies. But uh, they were alive, he said, and Joan Baez was out there. So what Jack is saying there in the 60s, that was a, we were adolescents and I think probably irresponsible, but it was a damned exciting time to be alive and he was in the middle of it. Dick. 
it's dangerous to take anyone like Thomas Merton too seriously, and that uh, he had a problem with that, uh, taking himself too seriously, which then he would feel badly about, and he was constantly going back and forth between wanting to be famous and wanting no one to know him, which is, of course, the problem with fame, because he was seeking spirituality on a very deep level. But to uh, make him something special, I think, would be against what Merton really was, and uh, he would want to make you feel more special. That was Sister Mary, uh, Jane Marie was saying about when you were with him. Uh, he was present to you. That's a sign of spirituality or at least uh, being in the moment. Uh, his whole idea of no self and Ron talking about the Eastern thing, something that he deeply believed in, that he was caught up. He was in a quandary. He was a Western person. He was European as well. We shouldn't remember that he was this kind of erudite, uh, sophisticated, if you've read you know, his biography, where he came from. And then he was stuck in Kentucky in a monastery. Uh, all of this played into um, who Merton, quote, was. And I don't think he, like the rest of us, uh, we don't really know who we are if we try to figure out in that in terms of personality. Uh, it's the knowing beyond that that he was interested in. And that's, that's the thing that uh, transcends all of us, including Thomas Merton. I think he would be happy if we could do that. And whether or not we remember him in his deepest self, I think he really doesn't care. At least I would hope so. I think in a way he would have been embarrassed by the Merton phenomenon. <laughs> and I think that there's almost, to me, like two different things projected in a way. Uh, his strictly Catholic writing and then if you read the journals, especially the later journals, you see he's, he's really still searching and finding. And, uh, you know, he displays his own vulnerability in a way. And I think that's why a lot of people do connect with him. <laughs>